While observatories can be found all over the world, there are more famous places than others. Along with Chile and Hawaii, the Canary Islands archipelago is also one of those exceptional places to look at the sky. With high mountains and trade winds, which keep the clouds below the summits, it's not surprising that we find here the largest European observation centre, located on two of the seven islands of the archipelago. Facilities that have enabled the IAC, the Canary Islands Institute of Astrophysics, to remain at the forefront of world astronomy. Today, on Palmer Island, four Cherenkov telescopes, each 23 metres in diameter, are being assembled as part of the CTA project. A global network of more than 100 telescopes in different parts of the world. CTA is a very ambitious project. To give you an idea, 1,400 people are currently participating in 32 countries and on five continents. What we mainly observe on this type of telescope are the most energetic phenomena in the universe. This is the largest project ever done in this range of energy. When we talk about astrophysics of great magnitudes, we can no longer be satisfied with a small group of people with four telescopes. We need to do huge projects like this one. Cherenkov telescopes make it possible to observe very high-energy gamma rays emitted during violent cosmic phenomena. Because it must be acknowledged, seen from Earth, space looks like a peaceful and wonderful place, but in reality, it is a very brutal universe. Stars explode, galaxies collide, black holes devour everything that passes by. The energy rays caused by these cataclysms collide with the Earth's atmosphere and break down into a series of particles called cascades. By studying this phenomenon, the Cherenkov telescope makes it possible to reconstruct this energy and to guess the direction from where it was emitted. A new way to understand the activity of our universe. This is the last area of astrophysics to be opened, and it really only started to work in the 1980s. We are, in a way, the young science of astrophysics. Just a few metres from the site, the Grand Tekan, the observatory's emblem, stands proudly. Because until the ELT and its 39-metre mirror are put into service, it now has the largest mirror in the world at 10.4 metres, which still makes it the largest optical telescope in the world. Head of Scientific Operations, Antonio, has developed a real passion for this telescope. The size of the mirror determines the power of the telescope, how far we can see. A telescope by its nature is a time machine, in the sense that light comes from so far away that it takes a long time to arrive. And that's very special, because on a large telescope, the more capacity you have, the more you can see back. As astronomers, we have the opportunity to study the different phases of the universe because we see them. It is as if a historian landed in the center of Paris and took a picture of the Champs-Élysées. And by zooming in, he could see Napoleon. And that by zooming in more, he could see Joan of Arc and that by zooming in again and again, he could see the first Celts living there, or the Gauls. That's the capacity of astronomy. If the Grand Tekan can explore the confines of the cosmos, it also participates in research on our much closer universe. 
A thorough knowledge of our own solar system and our surroundings remains one of the fundamental researches of astronomy. Julia is an asteroid specialist. Objects that have much to teach us about the formation of our planetary system, but some of which could also become a threat to the Earth. It is very important to study our own solar system. It's great to explore and try to know the whole universe, but you have to start with the closest thing you have, and above all, because it gives us information. Where we come from, how the Earth was formed, how life appeared on Earth. And I believe that this is one of the most important questions that human beings can ask themselves. It's a laboratory that we have on hand. Asteroids are remnants of, say, formation blocks of the solar system. That's how the planets were formed. And they have remained there since the beginning of the formation of the solar system. They provide us with information on the temperature that prevailed, what materials existed when the planets were built. And in this sense, it is very interesting. We are currently studying very small asteroids, which are very numerous and very difficult to study, and which can be a real danger to the Earth. In this area, this is a very significant step forward. And each new object we study brings us exciting new information that opens up new questions that will need to be answered. We have a lot of work to do. The sky of the Canary Islands is absolutely pure. Since 1992, a law has protected it from light contamination and regulates, in particular, the air routes over the archipelago. Nothing is allowed to interfere with the observation of the sky. The future of astronomy in the Canary Islands is also being prepared on another island, Tenerife, where not far from the majestic Te De volcano, there is the largest concentration of solar telescopes in the world. Here, only one star is studied, ours. Deciphering the sun and understanding it is one of the keys to our own existence. Without it, we would not be here. The Te De Observatory provides European physicists with the largest solar telescopes available today. Installations that make for a huge solar laboratory, of which Adrian is one of the latest recruits. Here, we have been studying the sun since the 1970s, and the stars too. You can get information about the sun in all kinds of ways, which is why this place is so special. For living beings, without the sun we are nothing. We would not have life and, of course, we would not be here now. It is the only star in the universe that we can see in detail, like the little mark that is being born here. We can study its magnetic field, its interior, its surface, its atmosphere. 200 billion stars populate our galaxy, and the sun is only one of them. A gas ball more than a million kilometers in diameter, in perpetual activity, and whose atmosphere is a complex environment, home to impressive eruptions and very intense magnetic fields. By studying the solar activity associated with these phenomena, researchers want to anticipate its effects on our planet, but also to understand the general functioning of stars. We discovered about 30 or 40 years ago that there was a primordial movement of the sun that seems to be moving closer and further away from us. It is like the beating of the heart or like a breath. It can be measured and repeated every five minutes, but in addition, in this movement, we have many other small movements, like small waves of the sea moving on the surface of the sun. We cannot say precisely why this is happening, because we do not yet know for sure. We understand these processes, we know that they occur, 
but we do not know yet exactly how. We do not only want to study how the universe is, but also how it impacts us. The sun still holds many mysteries, and it is in an attempt to break through them one after the other that the Teide Observatory has also decided to come and play in the big league. All solar physicists are unanimous. If we want to better understand the fundamental processes of solar physics, it is necessary to build a new generation solar telescope with a large aperture. This project is called the EST, the European Solar Telescope. Studying the sun is important for various reasons. First, to simply better understand physics, the interactions between plasmas such as solar plasma with magnetic fields, and second, we would like to predict when the sun could produce certain solar phenomena, such as eruptions, which could have an impact on our new technologies. Ideally, these events should be anticipated in order to be prepared. Solar magnetic activity causes changes on Earth that can affect our new technologies and therefore our daily lives. Being able to better understand the relationship between the flow of solar energy and the Earth's climate could also help to mitigate its effects more effectively. With unprecedented precision, the EST will rediscover our Sun and should allow us to continue to live with it in the best possible harmony. The new EST is a telescope like no other, and it will really make a difference when it comes to observing the sun. Since man has been scanning the sky, there have never been so many projects to decipher the universe around us and to push the limits of our knowledge ever further. All over the world, a new generation of researchers at the controls of ever larger and more powerful telescopes is dreaming of finally unlocking the ultimate secrets of the universe. A scientific and philosophical quest that will continue to surprise us and with which we will have to expect the unexpected. Astronomy is a science in which reality very often exceeds fiction. I think I'm really mostly looking forward to the things we will discover which we do not think about today, which we cannot even dream about. And these are for me are the, are the most exciting because they trigger then also the next question, the next instrument, the next telescope. Uh, this is this never ending. Uh, let's see when we meet again in 20 years um, what we have discovered and then we can have another good conversation.